Welcome, everybody. This is Starting Out Bright. I'm Noreen Savage. Thanks so much for being here. And you are in for a treat because Vivica Deva is in the house. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, who I am, who I'm not. I, first of all, am nobody official with Bright Line Eating. But the program has done a lot for me. And I became acquainted by a friend posting on Facebook, something so simple as that that she had lost 57 pounds with the program called Bright Line Eating. Anybody interested could just message her. So my hot little fingers got over to message her as fast as they could. And Lori, my friend, proceeded to tell me about a book by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson called Bright Line Eating. And in the book, she describes four bright lines that you don't cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weight and measured portion. And when I heard that, I was sunk. I thought, no way, there is no way I could do all of that. But here I was, someone who had been dieting for close to three decades, had tried just about everything that I thought was safe for humankind, but I was on a weight loss roller coaster, up and down. And so, but I got my attention from Lori and we went out for lunch. She described the program further. She suggested that I get the book and also get into the group called We Eat Bright With Lines, which is a private group. It's still going strong. We have Starting Out Bright, which is a private Facebook group associated with these Zoom chats. And so I got in that group, We Eat Bright With Lines, and I just sat and watched and read and saw transformation happening before my very eyes. People losing weight, like a lot of weight, sometimes 50, 100, 150 pounds. And here I was at 270 pounds. And for the first time in a long time, I felt hope rise in me. And I promised myself, <laughs> I get choked up. Yeah. I promised myself that if I lasted one year, I would do what my friend did. I would post on Facebook and help anybody I could. Well, the year was up, July 2020, and I'm getting ready to post. And as I'm getting ready to post, I'm a Christian and I feel God tell me, Noreen, you can do more than that. You could connect people, all these people that you just met on Facebook and in the groups, you could connect with those who needed hope and help just like you did. And so that's how the Zooms were born. And I'm happy to say that I'm not 270 anymore. I've lost 93 pounds as of today. It's been three years. It's not been overnight. Uh, my first year was 56 pounds. People ask me, you know, how much did I lose? I lost 56 pounds, one pound shy of Lori, but I'll take it. It was the <laughs> pandemic. I was going strong. But anyway, here we are. And also people ask, well, where do you get the people who come on starting out bright? Well, tonight, 
Well, who we have is Vivica Davy Nokun, and I found her through Annie C, who we all lovingly know as the techno guru, and she posted on We Write With Lines that there is a group, well, actually, I'm going to have her tell you more about it, Vivica Davy, but... Mm -hmm. There, there's going to be a combination of BLE with 12 step. And Vivica Davy is going to facilitate these. She's going to tell you more about these, but that's got my attention. And it's, this is unofficial stuff. This is people getting together. We know that, but it, it sounds so promising. So I just couldn't pass up an opportunity to reach out. And thankfully, here you are just like that. Welcome. <laughs> How Thank are you, you tonight? So great to get to know you the other day. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. great. Yeah, truly. Yeah, truly amazing. Beautiful. I, I just love all of this. I had no idea what you were doing, and I'm so inspired by it. Oh. So really deeply touched by well, this, your so story. Much. And so yeah. glad that you could be here. And you know, I told a little bit about my story. Yours is a little bit complicated really as you get to hear as we <laughs> talked the other day we yeah. talked about how do we get to what you're proposing to do you know mm -hmm. how did you get here because you're using bright line eating you're very mm -hmm. well spoken and, and experienced with the 12 step so I'm going to just let you start wherever you want and and I'll Okay. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. It's it's really great to uh, meet some new uh, great souls and uh, see some friends I know. And yeah, Noreen, we just had such a beautiful connection the other night and it really helps. I, I feel like your spirit of service speaks to why I'm doing it, right? So I'm in the group um, Brighter with 12 Steps <clears throat> and we have a Zoom meeting uh, I think it's called BLE 12 Steppers and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. There's a schedule, an unofficial BLE meet Zoom meeting schedule that Tony Wade created and um, Annie C can help anyone who's interested in that. And so there's other meetings there, BLE, unofficial BLE Zoom meetings, but these three 12 step BLE meetings, they've been a foundation for me. They really have just helped me so much. And at a certain point, so I'll say this about the 12 steps. I got into recovery when I was 20. I got clean and sober uh, when I was 20. And I was telling Noreen the other night that at first I knew that I had a problem uh, with uh, smoking pot marijuana. I knew I had a problem with that, um, but I didn't think I was addicted. I, I mean, that would never have occurred to me. Um, same thing like with alcohol. No way did I think I had that serious of a problem. But I recognized it was getting in the way of my, of me thriving in my life. So I, by a, a, a it really was a moment of grace that I was able to, at a certain point, stop. And I stayed stopped. Uh, the first three months were very what's often referred to as pink cloud. I was filled with hope and enthusiasm. This is wonderful. I actually moved and I moved um, to an area where I had support, which really helped. But um, from months four to 10 got worse and worse for me. So I, I very depressed, very sad, very discouraged. I didn't have any tools. And what I didn't know at the time is that I... Um, needed a program of recovery to stay sober, to stay clean. I didn't know that at the time. Um, I Really, I thought all I needed to do was change my life habits, and then I would be good. And I was telling Noreen, you know, truly a, a moment of divine grace, different things lined up, and I met a young woman who was sober, and she was sober with the 12 Steps and had been sober for about three years. And she was a few years older than me, but early 20s. Mm -hmm. And so she was my doorway in, right? And um, when I got that in, was, what I... I just want to yeah. stop you right there, because when you were saying this the other night to me and talking about this exchange between yourself and the woman, 
Yeah. And you were, first of all, surprised she was open about being sober. But, totally. But when you she saw you a few weeks in and said, you're not looking so good. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so I was telling Noreen that I came in, you know, and she saw me. So we worked together. We worked at a, um, at a convalescent hospital. I was a nurse's aide and she worked in the kitchen. She ran the kitchen. And so one day she saw me and said, boy, you don't look good. And I had had a really difficult night of cravings intense, intense cravings. And uh, I got through it, you know, I was white knuckling, got through it, but I was exhausted the next day when I came to work. And she just could see it on me, right? And, and I very casually said, yeah, it was a hard night. You know, I just had a lot of craving. And I was telling Noreen, I'll never forget, she just froze in her steps. And she, I, I feel like she got ashen. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And she leaned forward and said, it sounds like you were in the compulsion. And I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, you know, the compulsion to use. Uh, I lived in the compulsion. So I had no idea what she was talking about. I go, yeah, aren't you? And she just said, no, I am not. You know, that's what the 12 steps had given her. And then she proceeded to talk about a spiritual solution. I believed in a higher power. I believed in God, but I couldn't imagine that this could be removed, removed from me. And she said, well, people who work the 12 steps, right, and they can, they can come up with their own definition of higher power. It's not a religion. But if you work those steps, a miracle will happen. Yeah. I could see it. I mean, words are whatever they are, but her eyes were shining. Her disposition was full of joy. And as Noreen said, the first time she talked to me about it, I couldn't believe she was so open and free. I had so much shame. I had so almost, much. It almost sounds how like when we find ourselves in the group and we're just so shocked yeah. that people are putting yeah. then and now pictures. Right. Exactly. They're talking about exactly. the struggle as well as the success. That's it. And you're that's exactly like, right. Wow, we can talk about this, you know. Right? Can, yeah. The one thing I found about dieting is it was so lonely. <laughs> I was oh, just me. Totally. Calories and the counting and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I want to take yeah. you back though, because okay, you also said this awareness that both things you thought you you needed to tackle both the pot and the alcohol for some reason. Yeah. You had what was either divine awareness. You you yeah. had that thought process. And the other night you told me about this dream that you had. Yeah. And to yeah. me, that is significant because I believe we all have a moment. Some of it's a rock bottom thing that can just be, you know, like way out there. It could yeah. be your health. It could be anything. But some are like these kind of moments that you described. And I thought that was pretty powerful. Can you share that? Yes, Before I will. Before we get into the BLE. Yeah, the, sure. I'm letting you, you're <laughs> leading. I'm following you. <laughs> um, so I was telling her, she asked if I'd hit bottom or did I have a bottom? What was it? I did have a spiritual bottom, right? So, but my physical bottom was, would be considered a high bottom. It didn't look on the outside. I, at this point, I had a full-time job as a live-in nurse. I was very isolated. And then one night I had a dream, right? And, and in the dream, I was telling Noreen, I was at my old high school and I was in this kind of garage workshop. And the teacher there was saying to me, the class had ended, I guess, and he was leaving. And he said to me, don't take too long. He knew I wanted to stay and look for something. And I said, okay, and he left. And I was looking on shelves trying to find something. And then this young woman appeared next to me. And she was irritating me. She was very friendly, very sweet. I thought, you know, don't bother me. I'm looking for something. She was admiring my necklace. I had a little Pooh Bear necklace. And she said, oh, where did you get that? And I said, my best friend gave it to me. She said, could I be your best friend? I said, no. And she goes, okay. And she put herself inside a box onto one of the shelves. Like how you can do that in a dream, right? And I just looked at her doing that and thought, okay, whatever. And then I heard the door slam shut and a big, thick metal chain wrap around the door. And I looked and I saw the teacher locking it. He couldn't see me and leave. And I ran to the doors 
and he was already now in his car, like he was about to back up and a student came up, he was chatting with, I was waving and pounding on the doors, pounding because I couldn't get out. And just before he backed up, he saw me and he shook his head, he got out of his car and he walked back up to the doors. And as he came to the doors, I wanted him to come and then I was afraid. And I kind of backed away. I was like, well, I want the doors open, but I don't know that I want to get out. Right. And he unlocked it and swung the doors open. He said, I told you not to take too long. I said, I know. And I walked out and it was this amazing spring day. Life was just full and vibrant. And then I woke up and I told Noreen, I woke up and I started shaking and I could hear inside very, very clearly a message that said, you have a small window of time in which you can change the trajectory of your life. And if you do it right now, it'll work. And if you don't, it won't. Wow. And I knew that if I didn't change my life, like right away, I would not be able to change it. I knew it. I knew that, you know, I just knew it. And later in sobriety and recovery, when I've met others, right, like I came to understand how precious it is and how hard it can be. Yeah. Right? Like really, and, truly. And you know, Susan, and... And for those who are brand new, again, I'm referring to Susan Pierce Thompson, who wrote the book. Yeah. I needing. She had her own experience somewhat like that, not a dream, yeah. but she, right. she had this moment. And she often talks about look for the moment. Like look for the you, moment. Like if yes. you are in the ditch, yes. look for that moment to get yes. out. Yes. I love that. She uses the double dutch jump rope. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I love how she says, you know, the, and this has been my experience in life in general, that the divine sends us these opportunities, right? I, I had one time been driving and uh, I happened to have my GPS on. I was going somewhere and I remembered an errand and I was like, oh, I'm just going to get off and go get that thing because I'd forgotten about it. And I didn't want to mess with the GPS and I knew it would start talking to me, but I just thought it's fine. So I get off the road and it starts telling me, now go right, right? Because it thinks I'm going the wrong way, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm still not going to. And at a certain point, I thought, wow, this is just like God, right? Like if I make a mistake, I go the wrong way. I decide, no, no, no. I know you're giving me directions. I know you're telling me. I know I even asked you where to go and how to go. But I've decided I'm going to do my own thing, right? Like there's just this lovingly, now I would take a left right? <laughs> now I would cross that bridge and make a U-turn. Okay. Okay. If you're not going to do that, like just every few yeah. little, and I just started laughing and I thought, you know, that's my experience of 12 steps because part of what we practice in the 12 steps for those who aren't familiar is aligning our will, our life with a higher divine will. So and uh, yeah. Let us okay. get into that. You met the woman She's yep. introducing you. Yeah. Shocked because she's really surprised that you've been doing this all alone for 10 months. Yeah. Right. And she's and I just met. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you know that, yeah, it's it's um it's I don't really have well, I do have an incredibly strong will, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a matter of time before that was, I mean, it was running out. Yeah, I'm just it was running out my ability to resist my ability to I uh, was running out. So um, power gap. So you yeah, and got into go ahead meetings and um, we were, I watched we were in the tradition of yeah. um, the 12 steps. Yeah, we we're going to say which group, which group. Were. That's right. That's anonymity. anonymity. Yeah. So just as you were saying about being in that Facebook group, and watching miracles. Yeah, that's what it was for me. Right? Like at that time at that age, especially most people were twice my age. There's a lot more young people now. But at the time there wasn't. But I watch store every night, right story after story of people tell hopeless stories. Right? They but I could see these shining people telling the story, right? So I knew the person who was starting to speak had already gotten somewhere I wanted to be. They were already free in so many ways, right? But they would tell their story of how they had lost power, how they had gotten hopeless, how bad it had gotten, and the turning point, the moment of grace, right? 
where some one way or another they heard about it was willing because you can hear about it but are you ready right and i like when susan says you know she respects people needing to do their research right to know well do i really need this and and for me with brightline eating i didn't know that i didn't identify as a addicted to sugar and flour Right. I didn't. I had told Marina I did go through. So she in the slideshow, if anyone saw it, there's a, a thing for PTSD. I have complex trauma, a history of complex trauma. So 20 years into sobriety, um, that became something that I was ready to confront and deal with. It, it just rose up in my life. I was aware of it, but I have I I wasn't feeling it. I knew my history, but my but actually the feelings around it were frozen. I didn't have any access to them. And then at 20 years sober, I did. And what I came to learn uh, from the specialist I work with is that my psyche knew I was ready. Right? And I'm going to say on a higher level, the, the universe understood that the resources I needed would be available to me. Because trauma is still a new field. So right? how did the trauma manifest itself? Yeah, when you were going through finally experiencing allowing yourself we talked about that you were finally this was coming out you're kind of working it through but you're not because you're just feeling the feelings all of a sudden the things that yeah. you stuff down for so long. yeah yeah right so it's coming out did you say that was the time that you also comforted yourself with food Definitely. Even though I had gone through a 12 step program with food and had a lot of success with it. But when Pete, but when, when like this, everything converged and I was dealing with this deeper reality, there was also a part of me that intuitively felt maybe I need to comfort myself with food. Maybe if I just did that, you know, there's some part of me that needs to be healed. And there was actually some truth to that. There was when I got into trauma therapy um, because of my history, which has a connection to food. Um, the therapist said to me, number one, I might need to be heavy. My nervous system, might, my body might need to be heavy. I'd gained 80 pounds by the time I saw her. And, um, and she said that I have to be very careful about restrictions, food restriction. And that's true. So I had to do bright line eating in a unique way. I had to do bright line eating by honoring my trauma history and recognizing I could commit to the first two lines, no flour, no sugar, which was huge for me. Like, as you said, wow, if I, if that could happen, then for sure, there's a miracle here. Like, what? Right. And so I followed the other two lines very closely, but I didn't require them for of myself because it was way too stressful. I couldn't handle it. Uh, two years in, I was able to commit to the four lines. My third year was the hardest because it was, in fact, quite stressful for me. So I realized every day, this is why I didn't do it sooner. And I had a good foundation when I picked up the, you know, when I made the four lines right. My fourth year better. So because I was just restricting the sugar and flour. Yeah. No with sugar, paying no, attention, yeah. but not, not requiring. Right. I weighed and measured everything. I tracked everything. I stayed very close to the food plan and then later the maintenance plan, but it wasn't a requirement. So if I got my measurement wrong or I was picking up my plate and the scale went one ounce up or, you know, like point one up, that could completely derail me Okay. because of trauma. Like psychologically, didn't matter if I knew it's no big deal. I couldn't have handled it. So I would say to myself, member, that's not a bright line. It's fine. It's fine. I know because I'd look at my salad and go, how can I possibly fix point one? Oh. How do I fix point one? Throw the whole salad out? It's like that took me so much to make the salad. Now I'm going to throw the whole thing out. But it would have derailed me. It would have. So I would just say calmly the best I could, sweetie, it's okay. It's right. okay. You haven't broken any lines here. I you just can't help it. that. I just love it. And I, and I have to say that I have had to be kind to myself too. Yeah. I don't want to have the good day, bad day. Because mm -hmm. if you were here, when uh, I talked with Berlin, he talks, it's almost like an auctioneer, good day, bad day. Good day, bad day. <laughs> I don't want to have no. that. Because uh -uh. I'm, 
I will tend to say I'm good or bad. And I don't right. want to do that. No. I don't want to yeah. connect the two to my food. I just want no. to enjoy my food. So I do exactly I with the exactly. experience that I have that day. Yeah. I want to take you back just a little bit because I think if I'm if I'm correct on the timeline. Yeah. Your BLE experience began after you actually took weight off, right? It's true. That's true. And so so this I is have important too because yeah. you used a program that helped you and yeah. you needed it to be very confining, right? Yeah. I I went through a medical weight management program. And I was in a uh, 12-step program for food. So I was in the other end. But I, the, the um, abstinence I'd had in that 12-step um, food program was generous. What it did was keep me like, okay, so I put weight on because I was eating for comfort. 80 pounds in, I realized there's no amount of eating that's taking this whatever this aching aching pain aching like longing something I didn't know what it was I do know today that it was untreated trauma but I didn't know then I just knew that I was always you know like no matter how fantastic my day at the end of the day I'd be exhausted and I'd be just like I need comfort I need soothing I need comfort it's like for what I don't know so 80 pounds in I realized I didn't actually, surprisingly, but I do credit the 12 steps for this. I didn't feel powerless. I didn't feel powerless. It was a conscious choice. But I did feel like, okay, now what am I going to do? <laughs> like, I, I, that was hard. 80 pounds is a lot. And I didn't have any kind of, you know, in the program I was in, there wasn't a food plan like we have in Brightline Eating or some 12-step food mm. programs have. The one I was in didn't. Okay. So... Um, I couldn't figure out how to lose the weight. So I heard about this program through, um, if anyone knows what Kaiser is, it's a, it's a hospital. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, um, you know, shakes and bars and things, but you did, you, you were checked in every week. You met with a doctor, you had, um, medical tests to make sure you were okay. And they had support. They actually had some bright line things about it. Once I got into bright line eating, I'm like, oh, hey, some of this I know, right? Yeah. And it was very comforting because I knew exactly what I was doing, right? I knew exactly. And so in terms of the trauma piece, I felt held. Right. I was held. I was supported. I was with others who had large amount of weight to lose. So I didn't have shame, right? They yeah. had nice big seats. And from what I was told me, yeah. I'm not going into too much detail, just they even asked you to confine yourself of who you talked the program. About. They did. This was so shocking to me. <laughs> I told Noreen this. I, so you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the physician and she's asking you about your support, right? Which we talk about in Bright Line Eating. Like, and she said, this is a difficult program and you need to have support. So how much support do you have in your life? I have a lovely um, relationship with my husband. So I mentioned that. And she said, how about your family? Now, my parents are gone now, um, and I don't know. She was very intuitive. I probably hesitated. I didn't know what to say, right? I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. You know, like my mind's like, how do I answer that question? She goes, let me put it this way. Is your family undermining of your success? Do they undermine you? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, here's the deal. I forbid you to have any contact with anyone in your family while you're doing this program. <laughs> I was like, I just looked at her and she said, because you'll never make it if you have someone who's undermining you. Are you willing to commit to that? Oh, sure. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I'll commit to that. And when I left, I thought, my God, she was like this tigress, right? She was just like, mama tiger. You are not going to be around people who tear you down. And I thought like, wow, I didn't even think of that. I, and she just totally protected me in that way because I'm sure I would have naively been connected. And the thing for me with that, the kind of, um, I, I can be undermined and I don't know it, right? I don't know I've been undermined. I don't know this has happened until it's down the road. And I'm like, oh, why do I feel so crummy? And 
what's going, you know, I can get that. That's what can happen. So she just protected me in that way. Um, yeah. So I went through that program. I lost 80 pounds and I maintained it. Uh, quite well for about a year and a half. They were great at weight loss. This it won't be a surprise. <laughs> great at weight loss, maintenance, not so much, right? They offered stuff, but I'm telling you, I felt like I was doing calculus every day. I was like, oh my golly, okay, trying to figure it out. And so I it it worked, but I didn't have freedom. Right. I didn't have freedom. So when a friend of mine who I know from 12 Steps mentioned BLE and I saw some of Susan's videos, I was like, I kind of like you like, hey, and then no flour, no sugar. Oh, <laughs> no flour, no sugar. I don't know about that. But I thought, well, I'll give it a try. So I got the book. I tried it. I was very successful for about three months. And I used to see this friend once a month. So I had a little bit of support. Three months in, I felt fantastic. This is great. I'm loving it. But in the back of my mind, am I committing to no flour, no sugar for life? Like, am I going to do this forever? I don't know. Went to dinner with a group of friends. It was someone's birthday, not my food. You know, I'd been doing great for three months, even lost a little bit of weight. And I thought, well, I, you know, I thought I'd try this. I wasn't saying I'm doing it forever. So I had some dessert. I didn't go crazy off the rails. I didn't put all the weight back on. Susan talks about in her experience, it all seemed fine except for this. I was unwilling, or I think it was a year and a half, to give up flour and sugar again. That's a long time. Unwilling. It's a long time. I didn't gain a ton of weight, but at a certain point, I gained 10 pounds, right? So I my my recorded highest weight I think it was higher than this but my recorded highest is 273 and I'm today I'm at 186 186.6 was my last weigh-in um and you're so six foot tall so. yeah I'm just under six feet yeah. yeah yeah and um so I had you know my weight had gone up I could pull it off because I'm tall you know so then I was like 70 pounds but I thought who's to say it's going to stay at 70 pounds down, right? Like right. there's no, and that's the thing without a plan right. that's so clear that I know that's reliable and consistent and sure enough, it always works. Right. Which I had a lot of doubt about, I'll just say, and I still can encounter thoughts of like, I don't know if this meal's going to work. And some of that's my trauma. And I'll say to myself, yeah, I, it's okay. Yeah. Why don't we try it? Why don't we try it? I love that gentleness. Yeah. That's yeah. So I try it. And about halfway through my meal, I feel this like wave of ease in my body. Because my body loves bright mind eating. Loves it. Right? I have other issues. I can have other challenges with it. Body loves it. So I'll notice that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll finish my meal. And I'll be surprised like, huh, it worked. Right? So I used to, for a long time, I would say, after a meal, I'd say to my husband, just for the record, it worked again. <laughs> worked again. Yeah. Just think, I just want to announce lunch worked, dinner worked. Yeah. And again. I it's still, yeah, again. And yeah. I still lost a pound this week. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I've been in maintenance for about three and a half years. You go ahead. Do you have a question? We got to get into this. We got to get into the 12 step. Now. Okay. All as right. As far as what you're going to do, what? Okay. <laughs> I, I really want to know because I, I have talked with people who have been successfully combining 12 step programs, yeah. but there aren't any 12 step programs unless they're like in this group of some right. that right. specifically ask participants to do BLE. That's right. So, that, yeah, none, none that I know of. Yeah. If I were coming tomorrow, because it begins tomorrow. Yeah, it does. December, yeah. Yeah. If I were coming tomorrow as a newbie. Yeah. What can I expect you to be walking me through? Because it's going to be how many meetings? Is it 12? 12 meetings. Yeah. It's a 12 week what series. Are, what yeah. are we going to do? Okay. So it's a 90 minute um, Zoom session each week. And what we'll do is we'll have, um, we'll have a little centering. So just like with bright line eating where they take a moment, um, Noreen had done a slide of, I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. So I have some practice with that. 
And we'll just do a centering like we do in bright line eating, right? We just kind of land, <laughs> take a moment and breathe, right? Um, and then there will be some readings, pr pr probably from the 12 steps, maybe from BLE. The main texts that I'm using are the Bright Line Eating book, the main book Susan wrote, and the cookbook. Or no, I'm sorry, and Resume. Okay. So the two, um, but I'll also share resources from like weekly vlogs that relate to the step that I saw that I thought, oh, this, you know, this lines up for me. So anything, and there'll be a time at the end of our time together where anyone can share resources. So other things that speak to them. Um, so we'll do a couple of readings. I'll, I'll, my intention, if it works, that, like you said, with the tech, I think I, Annie's helping me with tech, so I have confidence with Annie. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I'll be inviting volunteers to read, right? And we'll put it up on the screen. And, or if someone has their book, you can read a section. I'll tell them the section to read. So we'll have about 10 minutes of reading, maybe 10 or 15. I'm going to go through it tomorrow before tomorrow night when it starts. I'm going to go through the timing again. Um, and then we're going to have 10 minutes. Or actually, I think, I think the next thing is I share. I think I share next my experience about 12, this step. Like we're going to start with step one. And the, the principle of step one is surrender and letting go. That's a spiritual principle. Like the places in life, if you're looking at addiction, often that's the classic thing where you kind of are, are hitting something you can't change. Right. But as Susan talks about life gets lifey, it's been my experience. There's lots of things that the principle of surrender has helped me with. So, the, so what I'll do is look at the principles for each step. Right. And we'll, um, so we'll read some things. I'll share some of my experience. Then we'll take about 10 minutes for quiet reflection, writing, meditation, or just kind of sitting with it yourself. And then we'll have facilitated group discussion. So okay. people can share their experience. They can ask questions, right? Things that make sense or don't make sense. Um, and really, so like with the first step, looking at how does Susan address it? You know, she talks about the neuroscience and says there are things we're powerless over in terms of our brain and how the brain responds to processed food, right? right? Like, so we can, t I could take that on and feel bad about it. I could feel like a failure, but Susan's approach is one that says, it's not my fault, right? It's not my fault. I'm wired that way to be drawn to, you know, all the science bundles she's done, all these different things that really talk about the physiology of the body and the brain. So, you know, being able to surrender to a reality that says the truth for me, which I've really found in abstinence, is how free I am without those substances. Mm. I didn't, like I said, I didn't know it coming in, right? Coming in, I felt like, well, I don't feel powerless. But I'll tell you what I was powerless over was cravings. I didn't know that. I wasn't powerless over not eating. But my God, am I, excuse me, <laughs> my goodness, am I glad to be free of that battle being gone at night. The hours after dinner where the thought would come in, I wonder if I should have that. Am I hungry? Is that what I'm feeling? Like, it's miraculous to me to have a closed kitchen. And not just the kitchen clothes that I can do it, but I'm free from it, right? right? So, so the surrender to the reality that, in fact, flour and sugar do have an impact on my body and my brain. I can see it. I can see the difference. I can feel the difference. So that's a, a, a level of surrender for me because every once in a while, certainly in my first year, maybe my second, I'd have the thought. I could have it again, which is, well, maybe I could eat it and it would be okay. I, I had that thought over the summer one day, popped in out of nowhere. I was on vacation and I'm like, I was walking by some cafes, <laughs> walking mm. by some not my food, smelling some things. And the thought was like, you know, I'm, you know, almost four years. I, I wonder, maybe I could. And all of a sudden I was like, what? I go, no, 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 no. Like maybe you could, let's not experiment. Right. I mean, truly, I, I said this the other night, there's a reason I haven't eaten a cookie. 
And I'm not saying that to be like I'm some kind right. of hero or something. I really don't know what's on the other side of that cookie. And it's like, that's why, exactly why right. I want to take a chance. That's exactly right. And what the 12 steps have done for me, so I was able to bring them into my bright line journey, right? All of these principles that have become a way of life for me, a way of living. So the first step, surrender to those things that have come into my life that are, you know, if I resist them and fight them, it makes my life worse, right? So how do we work with the principle of surrender? How does it show up in BLE? How does it show up in life? How do we work with that? In step two, we came to believe in a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And the theme there is restoration, a return to wholeness. A sense of what Susan talks about is freedom. Like, well, what is freedom? And can I have that? Right. And how does a higher power have anything to do with freedom? What's that about? Right. So conversation, dialogue about that, because in the 12 steps, it's not a religion. It's a spiritual program. But people are free to practice, to find, encouraged to seek out a spiritual source of support. Higher power could also be a group. It doesn't have to be divine. It could be the group. It could be bright line eating. It could be Susan Bear Thompson. It could be right, that you're following something other than just yourself. And you train yourself to be in a practice of reaching toward the support that can help you. Step three is we align our, we make a decision to align our will and our life to the care of these, I'm reading the steps for you, I'm just repeating them, yeah. care of God as we understand God, right. And so that it's a practice of what does it mean to, um, be listening deeply for divine guidance. And again, someone's guidance could be BLE, just follow the plan, right? So some people are like, you know, I don't need to figure it out. Let me go to the resources that are available. So, so step four is about inventory. We take a personal inventory. The way I look at that with bright line eating is to be able to evaluate for yourself what patterns are supporting your recovery and what patterns are getting in the way of it. One that I see that I encountered myself, I hear a lot of people talk about is people pleasing. Right. People pleasing can be a really difficult thing for oh. doing bright line eating, right? I mean, it can be the derailing moment. Someone oh, brought yeah. you not my food or they ask yeah. you to do something and I it doesn't work for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we look thing. at it. We identify. And Susan has some great tools for inventory. Could be identity inventory right? You could do that if you wanted. Step five is we share with another individual. So it brings us out of isolation. The 12 steps is, is kind of famously known as a we program. It's not a program you do on your own. So you find someone safe, right? And hopefully the group will be a safe place for people. And they might buddy up, right? In chat or something, find someone and say, hey, could I, could I share what's going on with me? Would you be willing to be a resource for me? So that's four and five. Six is we're entirely ready to have these defects of character removed. That's about receptivity to change. We're rarely entirely ready to have all of our thought patterns, all our behavior patterns changed. But, you know, what about people pleasing? Could I pick one? I don't have to change it. I just have to be, I, all I need to be is willing for it to be changed, right? The 12 step says to have God remove it. So step seven is humility and grace. That's the principle. And I don't dig up my sleeves and fix this pattern now. I pray. Okay. That's what I do. That's step seven. Step seven is I continue or I seek the support that can help me to transform it. But it's a spiritual program, so that's why I'm saying it, right? Um, um, so eight is about, you know, um, you make a list of others who've been hurt by patterns that are, are active in your life. So if I go back to people pleasing, how I could hurt somebody is, is agree to do something that makes me resentful. Mm. And then it's a negative, you know, energy between us, It's not their fault, right? right? It's, it's mine to say no, that doesn't work for me. But if I don't have that ability, that skill, so I don't, it's not about beating myself up. It's just noticing. In fact, I'll say it this way, because I've worked on that particular one. And actually the divine has helped me. <laughs> God has helped me with that. Is that um, it's my experience. If I say yes, I have a lot of ease and peace and confidence in yes. So you don't have to worry 
if you've asked me to do something and I say yes, you don't have to worry that it's a burden for me or I shouldn't have said yes. Okay. You, know, you don't have to worry about that. You're saying that's the gift. Sincerely. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if I, if I don't have that attended to, then other people could naturally worry. Oh gosh, you said yes, but you seem to be having a hard time. It isn't going well for you. People, it's been my experience can tell when you I shouldn't can, have said yes. You know, and you're saying yes, and you're, you're acting like the victim. Right. I mean, all kinds of things can happen. It's just, yeah. So everyone has their version of it. It's right. been a big one in my life. So nine is a willingness to change and, and make amends. And that's, um, so between the two, one is responsibility, one's accountability. Mm -hmm. It's a way of being free, right? It's just really, I want to say it's a way of being free. So it's, it's not about perfectionism. There's a, a quote, progress, not perfection. But these steps, each one of them, they they attend to life. I When I started the 12 steps, I, I heard it said, really, everyone can benefit from these principles. They are life principles. They're spiritual principles. They're life principles. So 10 is we continue to take personal inventory. And that really, for me, applies to maintenance. You know, that as time goes on, I evaluate. I have a buddy that I work with, and uh, I just recently made some tiny tweaks, right? It's like um, I limited the amount. I have nuts. It's one of my proteins, but I was re relying on it too much. I was relying on it too much. Initially, I had to just let it be fine. It didn't matter. <laughs> if I can eat bright, I'm not going to worry about if I'm going to nuts all the time. I'm plant-based, and it's hard for me to figure out other proteins. But I have gained some skills now. I've gained some skills. And so mm -hmm. I was ready. The moment of grace, right? I was ready. So I wrote to my buddy. I actually talked to her on the phone and said, I'd like to do this. I'd like to make this change. So um, 11 is we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand God. So that's, you know, Susan puts a lot of emphasis on meditation. And she doesn't require prayer i don't think she requires meditation either but she says if it's if you're inclined i encourage you right and um so it's a practice of building and deepening your spiritual life so what i'll do just as and so then let me lastly say 12 is carrying the message which is what you're doing oh the service right piece. it's the service yeah it's the what service like <laughs> Right. Yeah. And that's what happened is that I found in our group and there were people who were really interested in the 12 steps, fairly new to them, wanting to bring these two together, kind of recognizing for themselves they could see the power of it. Um, I knew I couldn't help all those people individually. Right. I had been praying for them and just kind of like really asking, like, what can I do? Because I want to help in any way I can. And I got the inspiration. You could lead a series. You, you can know, lead a series. Yeah. That is just, I think it's going to be really a great series, of, mm. especially for somebody brand new. Yes. A couple questions in the chat that I want okay. to Okay. Uh, oh, good. To, and one of them is, is, uh, is it a 12-week commitment or can a person no. just drop in? Okay. You can. Yeah. You can just drop in. Okay. You can just drop in. Yeah. And then the question that was actually answered um, but will the 12 step meetings be recorded? And that's no, because out of privacy yeah. concerns, they're yeah. going to be recorded. But those are two very good questions. They are good questions. Yeah. I, I want to ask you just a personal question myself. Um, are, will anybody be required to speak? Like, do, no, do you need no. to? Okay. So no. you can feel like even black box if you exactly want. okay yeah. you can be yeah. as involved as you want but there may be a time for questions too there will be okay. yeah there will be yeah and and part of it is in the group um dialogue and conversation and discussion so it could be a chat question someone could ask and annie will be helping me kind of like you're doing noreen in terms of the link if you um send a direct message to annie c annie can get you the link for the um meeting tomorrow i think well, someone in the and chat actually i can put it in the starting out bright group okay too. okay because it's a private group yeah and do you want to encourage people to go to the brighter with 12 steps group 
Sure. It's a great group. And okay. so, um, you know, if, if you feel like, you know, this is resonating for you and you'd like to meet other people who practice it, I love that group. Yeah. What will so happen you can, in that group? Is that a group where you are talking about 12 steps like every day or is it just... Do you mean the meetings? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Not, yeah. Like in the Facebook group. Oh, in the Facebook, it varies. Okay. Yeah, someone asked a question the other day. Um, I happened to see, so it varies. Yeah, it varies. So again, I yeah. want to say the name of that is Brighter with Twelve Steps, and that's yes. a private Facebook group. It's private. Yeah, you'll have information there also about. I think so. Yes. Meeting. Yeah. And yeah. You can also go to the Starting Out Bright private group, and we'll have. Um, I will find out the unofficial Zooms and also okay. thank you for this too. Yeah, thank and you. And as people are watching this recording, the time may have passed for when yeah. they are seeing this and oh gosh, I missed this these 12 meetings. But if they go to like the brighter with 12 group, 12 steps, yeah, maybe they can connect with you there. Sure. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe yes. how this time is going by. I do have to mention a couple of comments. You know, when I said there's a reason why yeah. I uh, haven't had a cookie, it's not to brag. It's seriously, I don't know what's on the other side of that cookie. And you described one dessert took you a year and a half to get back on pro. That's right. So a comment is one is too many and a thousand is never enough. <laughs> yes. True. Yes. And Linda says, I surely do know what would be on the other side of that cookie. Not worth it. Too much to lose. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Too much to lose. I, I had a friend ask me one time, you know, well, what do you think would happen if you broke your lines? Right. And I said, I don't know. And that's why I don't want to break them. Because right now, what do you feel? Free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I really do. I, 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 it's, I'm still figuring out in terms of the healing of the trauma piece, right? I like how to plan. Um, so I'm now in week six of an experiment where I plan a week at a time. I didn't have skills around making meals and planning food, a uh, really steep mountain for me to climb. Uh, before in the 12 step group I was in, I ate all my meals out. Right. So I have to go or out. Um, and in Brightline Eating, I eat 98% of them at home. Right. But it's a very big deal to do that. So um, what I could figure out was before, yeah, go ahead. Before, when we talked, there was a reason to eat out. It there was, was a less, reason to eat out. It was out. less traumatic. Yeah. It was less traumatic. Yeah. I, it was, I had to walk through a lot of grief eating at home and taking care of myself. It brought up a lot of grief and sadness. It wasn't easy. But, um, it's better and better every day, right? Well, better and better every day. You're kind of answering the question that I was going to ask you, which is what are these non-scale victories? The things you can't yeah. measure on the scale of yeah. just going through bright line eating for your maintenance and, uh, you know, coupling it with 12 step. Yeah. What are yeah. the non-scale victories for you? Oh, golly. Um, you know, the, the, the piece, Susan, in one of her recent blogs talking about identity shift, right? And she said, the first one is when we take on the identity of I don't eat that versus I can't eat that. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So when we shift into no, it's not a problem, I don't eat it, right? Mm -hmm. So ver versus I'm, you know, I'm something's being taken from me. And the second identity shift is contentment. And I would say, you know, that is deepening over time. It's I, 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 I needed to let go of what I thought my body needed to look like. It's not the French formula. I thought it would be. My body's like, mm, not really interested so when far. I, when I listened to the maintenance, what she was talking about, you're talking about today's blog, right? The or, or this week's, yeah. yeah this week. Yeah. Um, I had another thought of where I think I am. And mm. I call it happy discon discontent. And it's not that I'm a discontented person. I'm happy. I'm mm -hmm. really happy with the progress. But I hold enough discontent of like, nope, I still have some swelling in one. Ah. 
Okay. I still, I'm still allowing myself to use the program yes. to lose weight. Every once in a sure. while, I put myself on maintenance for a couple of weeks. Like, yeah, I want to stop for a minute for whatever health reasons or whatever, but I'm allowing myself to, to still keep going. To I love that. Yeah. So it's happy, but just enough to, <laughs> to keep working on it. Yeah. And I think, I think we know within ourselves, right. If it's okay. And I think what she's addressing is the compulsion when right. it's an obsession, right. When the discontent is we're actually fine and we don't know it. And it's never going to be good enough. And it's never going to be. Yeah. But I know like the recent change I made with nuts. Yeah. That's because it's like, you know, I, I could feel and, 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 and I took a few pounds off doing that. I could feel it. I could feel yeah. like, Oh, okay. You know, that's why I weigh periodically to be able to just stay conscious of where I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one more question for you. Okay. And you have just been such a delight. Um, oh, good. <laughs> the question I have for you is this, what would you say to someone who is tonight listening and they're thinking, I've never gone to 12 step. I don't know. Yeah. Just getting started with BLE. What would yeah. you say to someone for trying out what you're offering, the BLE and 12 steps together? If you're curious at all, I, I would say jump in and listen and see if it speaks to you. There is tremendous power in those steps. And that's what I know to be true is there, there are tremendous power. They're transformative. So the, the bringing the, the two together can be an incredible resource and support. And I think the people who are coming will be lovely people to meet and see and connect with. You could meet some new friends, right? So my intention is to share the resources. There's, you don't have, if you don't like it, it's fine. If it doesn't work for you, it's fine. You can come in 15 minutes in, be like, oh, I want to leave. You leave. It's okay. It's fine. You know, it's no problem. Right. So if you're at all curious, if you feel like, I mean, I hope it feels safe and welcoming and warm and a place to um, explore. So uh, does that answer it? Yes. Did that answer your question? Okay. So much. Yeah. So, and Vivica Davy, it's just such, it's been my pleasure to meet you yeah. and to chat with you tonight and the other night. And I hope it's the beginning of many more. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And thank you, dear Annie. I see you in there answering questions. God bless you. I hope Yay. you do, Cindy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we're asking about time. Yeah. Any last thoughts as we close up? Gratitude. I'm so grateful. I just, you know, it, it, I feel like bright line eating is a miracle in my life. I really do. I really do. I, I am so grateful to be bright. And every day at the end of the day, I, I give thanks for the uh, blessing of it. There's a lot of freedom in it. There's just a lot of freedom. And I, I it feels like the most loving thing I do for my body. And um, yeah, gratitude. When you get that right, it just spills over to even more and more gratitude on so many other things. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And well, I'm so that, grateful for everyone who came too. It's so sweet. I appreciate it. And come over to Starting Out Bright and we'll make sure and post all that information too. There okay. are lots of questions about where to go, who to see, <laughs> how to get connected. How do I get in? Yeah. So you'll help Come them. over to Starting Out Bright. We'll get you set up. Okay. Okay. So All right. I'm thank gonna, you. I'm going to close as I do each Good. week. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Vivica Davy. <laughs> How would you like to play Three Question Thursday? Sure. <laughs> right. You know, we didn't really get to yoga. You right. That's true. A little bit that yeah. you are a yogi, yogi right? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I do not let everybody know that you have your own YouTube channel. Can you tell people what they might find? It's in the slideshow. Yes. Somebody on a podcast. Sure. They're looking for it. It's under your name. Under my name. Yeah. If you type in Vivica Davy and my last name is spelled N O H 
K-U-H-N. And I think, Noreen, you put it on the flyer. So if you look at that, you'll have it. So if you type YouTube and my name, it'll bring you to the channel. And I started it when COVID hit. So as a way of getting resources out there for people. Um, there's, I have a lot of chair yoga. I tend to teach gentle yoga. So I have, um, I have a, a series of videos that's called Awake and Ready. And that's, uh, I, I can't remember if there's any chair in there. I don't think there is, but it's, it's fairly gentle practice. And then chair yoga. I have a lot of chair yoga videos. So, um, let's see. I have some meditations. So I have some meditation videos. I have a fair amount of talks on yoga philosophy. Um, I'm also a minister in our community. So there's some Sunday service talks that I have. Um, there are a lot of resources. Okay. So, yeah. So kind of piggybacking on this, still question one. <laughs> For somebody new to yoga like me, are there like some gentle, easy ways to? Very. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really accessible. Okay. Right. It, it's very accessible. I think if you click on any of the chair yoga, um, it's intended to be accessible for everyone. I talk a lot about modifications. I move slowly through the movements. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's intended to be that way that anyone can practice it. OK, yeah. I, have, I have question number two. You mentioned just a minute ago something about you know, especially with your trauma with food related things. Yeah. It was a really big deal to even eat in your home. Yes. And now you're to a point where you're planning a week at a time. Yeah. Can you share one favorite meal? It could be breakfast, lunch, or dinner that sure. you'd like to. I mean, it just popped in my mind. Um, taco salad. I love taco salad. So I do with taco salad, I do a, um, life is it lifeline veggie they're crumbles and they're they're mexican flavored so that's the protein that i use and um so i use a mixture of veggies right lettuce and tomato and corn and you know peppers sometimes and my dressing is an aioli wildwood um garlic aioli so this is a vegan it's it's really yummy. I like it. And so I do two fats for it. You don't have to, but I do a, an ounce, right? Like um, an ounce of it. And I mix, um, I also have salsa. And in maintenance, um, avocado can be a vegetable or a fat. But because I use the aioli, I'll do my avocado as a vegetable. I do half an avocado. And um, yeah, it's really delicious. And yummy and I usually do about a, a let's see is it a 13 ounce salad or 14 ounce salad with the salsa yeah that's one. <laughs> oh, that sounds really good that it's very good very flavorful yeah it's very flavorful yeah and chipotle I forgot I do chipotle spice in the aioli and I mix it up and that must it's very feel good. like such an accomplishment too it is yeah I was just noticing the, this week on one of my days, um, right, I think, it, anyways, I was noticing that I didn't have to look at my recipe. Like even now I'm telling it to you. So part of the trauma response for me is that I can go blank, right? I, 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 will for, I used to forget. So it'd be really hard to make a meal. First off, I couldn't even imagine what to make. But then I couldn't remember how to make it. And I'd have so much shame about it. Like I knew it wasn't complicated. How come I, was, I can't remember? So I, um, I have it all spelled out for myself. <laughs> That's what I did over the, over the four years. I've written down meal options and I write everything down, right? And so then when I plan, I have my little book of my meal options and I have very simple dinner is pretty much the same. I do a canned soup for dinner that I add veggies to. And um, that's when I do have nuts and another protein. And um, yeah, anyway, it's that's been a journey fantastic. for sure. <laughs> you are really big on self-care. Yes. And, yeah. and I would love if you could just, we kind of did this the other night because I was saying about dealing with procrastination sometimes. Yeah. How would you walk me through a thought process of, 
letting go or, or, or you know, something usually triggers the procrastination, you know, right. procrastination can be one of these things that if I don't get it done, it, it won't be judged. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, a way you know, of protecting of, yourself. And so sometimes right. procrastination can really be tied with perfectionism. Definitely. So how yeah. can I gently get rid of those um, nagging thoughts to procrastinate? I would say the the practice that I can align with healing trauma and also bright line eating with the um, IFS model of parts, right, is to recognize a pattern and um, meet that pattern with compassion, to recognize it came from somewhere. And so, like you said, that if, if you have within you, well, if I don't do it, no one can judge what I've done. So mm -hmm. it can feel safe to not do it. Right. Right. And so then if I'm doing it to honor the fact that I might feel unsafe as I'm doing it and how can I support myself in feeling safe enough to try. Right. And you know, what I've learned is that when I'm transforming a pattern and moving towards change, it's not about perfection. It's about progress. So to understand when something like I will say with the parts works, I needed outside support to do that because it was so triggering for me. I love the idea. I immediately resonated with the concept, but I was like, "Ugh, you know, I have some wounded parts that are extremely wounded. Right. So love, compassion, positive self-talk, which meets the pattern with kindness. Right. Cause the, the thing that never gets me out of the hole is judgment. Right. I, I will say today I was activated getting about tonight. Right? I was, I was activated. So I went on a bike ride and did my best. And at a certain point I could feel tears right behind me, right? All day I could feel it. And so at a certain point when I came home to make my lunch, there were the tears. And what I said to myself, and I had to learn how to do this is it's okay to be activated. Right. And I can feel such a sense of failure. Like, how come I still get activated? There's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason. Wow. You know, you know, what's the one piece that like, I, I'm like pulling that right out is the part that you said, this may be a little uncomfortable yeah, because you're telling yourself the truth. And yeah. before, because many, many books and and such will just say, just do it. Right. But if you can just, if you can just do it, but first understand this will probably be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And you yeah. can keep moving forward. That's right. It's like taking your hand, right? Because often it's a small part. It's a young part, right? That, that these patterns get formed often, not always. But somehow but to, was judged at some point. Somehow was judged. That's right. And so rather than be harsh with myself, you know, get over it. How right. come it still is hard for you? You know better. Any of those things, they don't heal, right? It doesn't heal it. <laughs> but if I can meet it with kindness, it heals it more every time. A little bit more is healed every time. Like, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so be your own best friend. Yeah. The authentic self Susan talks about. Right. And Everett talks about all those qualities, every one of them, curiosity, compassion, yes. right? Those eight C's. Yeah. They're all good. They're all good. Vivica Davy, so Yay! glad to have you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Your great oh, yeah. inspiration, your great information. Mm. And thank you for playing three questions. <laughs> You're so fun, Noreen. Thank you. So and thank you, friends who stayed. It's so sweet. I I so appreciate it. <laughs> it's so fun. Good night, Yay. everybody. Good night, Stay everyone. Good night. <laughs>